Good morning, I'm James Catado. And I'm Amada Cava. It's 9 a.m. on October 17th, and welcome back to Rise and Shine at 9. Today is a very special day here on the Oswego State Campus. Today is the 14th annual Louis B. O'Donnell Media Summit. Media Summit co-founder Lou Borelli is with us. And we have a special interview with an Oswego State student who's taking an active role in the community. Stay tuned. It's officially 9. Let's get right into it. Today is the 14th anniversary of the summit. Since 2005, SUNY Oswego has been welcoming back alumni and, and the like to discuss different topics all related to different social aspects of the media. Today's theme is viral voices, advocacy, and the digital age. Founded by two of our alumni, Lou Barelli, class of 1977, and Al Roger, class of 1976. The panelists will be discussing how digital and social media have shaped society when it comes to introducing new movements. And we have seen a lot of those movements arise in 2017 and 2018. It's yes, been we have. just an influx of movements. Um, one specifically that I want to highlight is the Me Too movement as they're reaching mm. their one year anniversary. Um, did some research last night, and it really was started by just one tweet by Alyssa Milano, the yeah. actress, where she was accusing um, Harvey Weinstein of sexual assault, and she just tweeted, if anyone has ever been sexually assaulted, just tweet me too, and that's how the movement was born. It's really been a global movement. You've seen uh, celebrities, you know, athletes, stuff like that, really, really get into this, and it's uh, really involved everybody on Earth especially in the United States, Yeah, and too. I'm glad you said global because last week, New York Times just came out with an article how India's having their own Me Too wow. movement. Yeah, so it has been a completely, like, influential. You know, the, uh, another important movement that I really wanted to touch on was the, um, the NRA movement, and that happened because of, this, because of the Soman Douglas shooting in Parkland, Florida. You know, you had uh, advocates for it like Emma Gonzalez who uh, were – pro March for Our Lives and stuff like that and they really made that happen you know and just like um, athletes and celebrities that got involved um, it was really like a global thing through social media yeah. you know so that was really important too but let's let's talk about the uh, the the history of the media summit you know yes history so starting 2005 I believe the first one actually the first uh, theme of the media summit was how can we trust the media which is funny because last year's theme was um, politics, fact, and fiction. Yeah. So it's kind of like the cycle of media going through so many controversies. I think that's pretty interesting. And you know, we had we had famous alumni in, in the past, like Al Roker and Steve Levy that, you know, have both made it very big in the industry, uh, that have graced us we go once again. You know, they, they were former alum too. And I think it's really awesome when you have the students be able to see those famous alum that they watch on TV maybe every morning, you know, and they're actually seeing them in person and they're relating to them because they share something like being fellow Lakers with them. Yeah, or just the fact that we're talking about topics that are timely, like we are on the pulse of what's happening right now. Right. And the fact that we have, you know, media industry leaders coming in to, to give us insight of what's actually going on behind the scenes, you know, behind the tweets, behind the posts. Um, I think that's just an amazing thing. I can't wait to interview Lou and get you know pick his brain. I know, me too. Yeah. And you know, especially because it's such a it's such a social media driven world today. You know, we have a lot of big influences in the country like Donald Trump and Kanye West who who don't take it lightly on on Twitter. You know, and yeah, they're not afraid. Yeah, exactly. And you know, having you know a mediator or a different voice to step in between it and stuff like that. I think that's very important. Um, and I think that today's Media Summit is going to be a very good example I'm of that. I'm so glad you touched upon that. I think that's why this is kind of hard to talk about digital advocacy because there's always two polar extreme sides. And I'm interested to see how this is going to even itself out in a sense. Where, when are we going to get a mediator? When are we going to get to talk about, um, you know, talk about these things without people yelling, if that makes any sense, right. without people barking at each other. So hopefully they can touch upon that today, the panelists, no pressure. It's going to be a lot of fun, but let's check in with our Storm Team 10 meteorologist, Joe Champagne, to find out how today's looking. Joe, how's it going? You know, it's not too bad across the area. We're waking up with temperatures in the low to mid 40s. The sun is out currently, though showers have passed by. Taking a look at the current satellite and radar you can see here, we did just have a round of showers come through, but that has worked off to our east. Those showers do continue to work into western New York, and that will be our main story for today. Showers, cloudy conditions, highs high around 49, gusty winds 15 to 25 miles an hour. I'll have more weather coming up after the break. Stay tuned.
Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Is how are you precious? Okay. Mm -hmm. Take out the pressure. It's way too cheesy. Okay. Yeah, Just go, hey, right. how are you? Nope. How's your day? Yeah. Oh, don't be cheesy. Uh, yeah, that's good. So, uh, what'd she say? She's still typing. I'm not sure. She never takes this long. Huh. I wouldn't worry about it. Give it a few minutes. Okay. Welcome back to Rise and Shine at Nine. Today we have a very special guest. It's our pleasure to welcome the co-founder of the Louis B. O'Donnell Media Summit into the studio, Mr. Lou Borelli. Thank you. Thanks for coming on today, Lou. Hey, you know, this is my favorite day of the year. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Let's get right into it. We're going to take a stroll down memory lane. Oh, honey, uh, please not. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> Um, we're going to start with a little yearbook photo that we oh. had. We just want to confirm mm. that it's you. You know, okay. there's, there have All been right. many Lou's. Here it um, comes. Oh, it's coming Waiting up for right it. now. Wait for it. And uh -oh. it's you in the bottom right. Yeah. Do you see the little curl? Yeah. The curls? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we have a better picture. If we go on to the next picture, we can see. Oh, yeah. yes, that's yeah. you. Yeah, I'm that's in, I'm Christmas. In, I'm in Hewitt Union, and it was, I think it was the Thanksgiving. It was a Christmas dinner, actually. Christmas dinner. Thank you. See? <laughs> it's I'm okay. close. I'm close. It's been Still a couple years. It. Yeah, the fro is not as big as it used to be. I see some curls in the back. It used to be. ABA, Dr. J. It was, it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to play a quick game. I want you to guess who the next person is in the next picture. Oh dear. I can't promise you a prize if you do guess who it mm -hmm. is. Do you know who that person That's is? That's Mr. Trolley. That's Mr. Trolley. Mr. Trolley. Can you tell us about Trolley. Mr. Trolley? So Mr. Trolley is Dr. Louis B. O'Donnell. And he was the uh, chairman of the department here. Back then it was called Com Studies. And uh, there wasn't much else around. It was interpersonal communications and broadcasting. But Doc O'Donnell um, had this little side hustle where he was producing this children's show. So people, okay, so you kids would not have seen it, but your parents, or maybe even your grandparents, grew up, if you grew up in central New York, you had Mr. Trolley, and Doc was Mr. Trolley, uh, and a few of his cohorts that actually worked here on campus were really? actors. And, you know, it was basically, you know, think about it as live animation, literally were live, and they had put the hats on and it was like puppets, but they were people. Yeah. And it was it was a very um, it was a very popular kids show. And it was groundbreaking in a time when, you know, I mean I think Sesame Street was around, but maybe not. It yeah, was it was in nineteen fifty five. Well then magic toy shop. Uh, right. <laughs> but let's talk about your time here. I wanna know Lou Barelli mm -hmm. as a eighteen to twenty something year old. I was actually, I got here, I didn't turn 18 till after. I was a young oh, wow. freshman. Oh, you were a young freshman. So even in a year where you could go to the bars at 18, I still had to stay home for six weeks because I didn't turn uh, 18 until October. Ah, copy. But I you was were a young and But you're still very much involved. Yes. I, you, uh, you were doing it all. I did. I, I came here with a bit of a background in radio. I, I started in radio when I was in high school. 
And so I signed up to work at the radio station. I was a competitive swimmer. I swam here for four years. I was a photographer for the Oswegonian. I wrote sports stories for the Oswegonian. I think we have a sports story. Uh -oh. Let's bring that sports story we did up. We not rehearse this. Because it was, <laughs> that's, this is a fun. Uh, the next one actually would show, that's Doc. Uh -huh. yep. So this article, very interesting. Let's pay attention. Swim team prepares for season. It's yes. written by Lou Borelli. Yes. And it's talking about Lou Borelli. Yes. And in the picture is? Lou Borelli. Lou Borelli. You Can you sitting. <laughs> so look, when you, here's the deal. If you want your team to get publicity, the best thing you can do is find a writer who's on that team because they, you know, look, we would travel around. It was, and, and I like to write. So they were like, look, you're a swimmer. Write about swimming. And that was that. Um, they got my name right half the time. Two R's, two L's, in case you're keeping up at home. And, and it, was, uh, it was an easy way for me to keep in touch with my family because back then, no cell phones, no email. You, if you wanted to write a letter, you had to write a letter, put a stamp on it, mail it. So rather than writing out letters, I would just clip the Oswegonian and, and send that off. So they knew where I was, what I was doing, and then every once in a while, you know, I get the note back, call your mother. So I would. So Lou, I gotta ask, what's it like to see the communications department evolve over the years ever since you were a student here at Oswego? So we've always had this plucky kind of um, attitude that we were as good or better than anybody else. And I think over the last, um, certainly since this campus center and the studio opened up, we've proven that we're, we are the best communication school in New York. I don't care if you're a fan of Newhouse. I don't care if you're a fan of Park. I don't care if you're a fan of NYU. This school is the best school for anybody to come to for one simple reason. There are kids that are in the studio today that were high school students a few months ago. They're freshmen, and they are working on a live news broadcast. You cannot do that in Syracuse. You cannot do that in Ithaca. And we're doing it here because we can. And that is the best thing I can say. We've got great instructors. We have great facilities. And we have a, a, a SUNY, um, a, a campus that is run by a president who is all about student engagement, student involvement, student success. And you put all that together with the donations of my friend Al Roker, who under wrote the studio and other people have supported our cause and it's a winning formula and that's why I um, I am an unabashed Laker fan you know we talk about pros with GPAs and that is it you know what um, do you know what an Oswego student calls an entry-level job answer freshman year boom wow there you have it by Lou himself um, I'm very much interested in knowing how the school inspired you or had an impact um, towards your career because I read that right after you graduated you actually stayed on campus and you had yes, a job. I did. I, I they actually, hooked you up. I, I, so I, I graduated. So during my college career I did a lot of work on campus. During the summer to pay for school I ran a beach club and I was a swim coach and I did all that stuff. The year I graduated I did not go back to the beach because I thought oh I'm gonna go find a job and I was working part-time in radio I was looking for work but there wasn't anything happening that was exciting. And then I got a call, basically, from uh, my old professor, Vince Duty, who said, hey, I got a promotion. I'm like, well, great for you. And he goes, no, 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 I, I'm looking for somebody to replace me. It's a 10-month contract, and you get to teach a couple of classes, and you create instructional programming. And so I thought, OK, so I get to go back to school. You pay me the money I paid you for four years to go there, and I get to teach my friends. Yeah, I'll do it. Why not? It's a good gig. And, um, and we were, uh, at the time, we had created this production group to create local cable programs for Teleprompter, which was the company back then. And that was really how I built up my portfolio so that when I left school, my first job is at UA Columbia in Westchester. We were building out Westchester County. And I created and built studios. And we had a remote truck. We did I Own a Basketball. We did high school plays. We did all that stuff. But I could not have done that had I not had the opportunity for the last year, my senior year, and the year that I worked here to put that production team together. This is a very hands-on school. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's all about the getting active. You know, it, it is. The, the opportunities are endless. And, and college is a place where you have the opportunity to fail. Right. And if you're not failing, you're not trying hard enough. You really need to get active and involved and source out where your strengths and your weaknesses are and, and, and build on those. And I, I, I think this place does a great job of that. I really do. And I'm so proud of you guys. I, I have to say, 
I do watch. I do watch. <laughs> and the level of expertise each year, the bar keeps getting raised higher, and I keep thinking, eh, they're never going to make it, Pat. Well, and every year you do. So kudos, Thank you so much. Yeah, you. thanks for watching, yeah, Lou. We appreciate absolutely. it. We appreciate I also sent comments. <laughs> oh, we've seen the comments. <laughs> we've seen them. We've seen them. <laughs> yes, we have seen the comments. Uh, well, thank you for joining us today, Lou. Thank you. Um, when we come back, Joe Champagne will be bringing you to bringing you the forecast for today's summit. So don't go anywhere. My name is Gina Iliev. I am the Health Equity Coalition's coordinator at Planned Parenthood here in Central and Western New York. I am also executive master's in public administration here at the Maxwell School, Syracuse University. In the last couple years, you've seen a number of movements, and I'm sure you've seen all the hashtags that go along with it. Um, I think it's really important to talk about what those hashtags mean, what, and then once we garner that power through those um, media avenues, how do we really activate people on the ground and in real life? I'm really looking forward to learning from the other panelists to what they do. Um, I work for a you know, local nonprofit, and some of the other panelists are from very big corporations, and I'm really interested in how they navigate those spaces. What do those connections look like? Welcome back from the break. I'm Storm Team 10 meteorologist Joe Champagne. Taking a look at the current satellite and radar, we do have those showers working through the area today. Very cool temperatures. We do actually have a freeze warning in effect that goes into effect at 1 o'clock in the morning all the way until 8 o'clock tomorrow morning for those temperatures getting down close to freezing or just below freezing. Current temperatures waking up. We are, most of us are in the upper 40s, some low 50s. Here at Oswego, we're sitting at about 51 degrees. Those current winds, strong near the lake, anywhere from 10 to 20 miles an hour. A little bit strong, uh, weaker as you head back towards the south, towards Syracuse. And taking a look at the future cast, you can see those showers will be uh, widespread throughout the area today, heading into um, the afternoon, or actually heading into tonight, those uh, showers will start to change over to snow showers. And that will continue through the early morning hours on Thursday before clearing out Thursday afternoon. And by the evening, that sun will be back out into the area. Uh, rainfall through the Thursday evening, we could have anywhere from a quarter of an inch to a half an inch. So nothing too significant. And then taking a look at the seven day forecast, you can see today, Wednesday, we're going to have uh, 49 degrees for our high. This heading into the weekend, the sun does come back out but then cooling down for the weekend with cooler conditions and possible, possibly some rain and snow showers. And then heading into next week, we're back into the low 50s with those showers around. We'll be right back. My name is Gina Iliev. I am the Health Equity Coalition's coordinator at Planned Parenthood here in Central and Western New York. I am also executive master's in public administration here at the Maxwell School, Syracuse University. In the last couple years, you've seen a number of movements, and I'm sure you've seen all the hashtags that go along with it. Um, I think it's really important to talk about what those hashtags mean, what, 
And then once we garner that power through those um, media avenues, how do we really activate people on the ground and in real life? I'm really looking forward to learning from the other panelists to what they do. Um, I work for a you know, local nonprofit and some of the other panelists are from very big corporations. And I'm really interested in how they navigate those spaces. What do those connections look like? What's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. The pressure's too much. I quit. I get it. I can do better. Just please, don't leave. Don't let your heart quit on you. Get your uncontrolled high blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Meet Daphne, your not-so-typical biology junior from New York City. I had the opportunity to spend an afternoon with her, and here's how it went. So Daphne, thank you for joining me today. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I mean, I think like everyone, I have an unhealthy obsession with Netflix. So I spend a lot of my time on there, but when I'm not, um, when I'm trying to give my eyes a break, I usually um, arts and crafts, and I really love um, scrapbooking. So I take the sort of like that excitement and that fun, and I bring it to my planning, my everyday sort of uh, schedule as to how I manage my work and other things that I'm doing, and it just helps me sort of keep everything in check. You sound like a very busy person. Why is it that you're so busy? been an absolutely crazy uh, year, actually not even a year, it's only been about eight months, but in that eight months uh, my life has completely changed. Um, so starting, uh, I, I can really pinpoint it to uh, uh, February 14th of this year. Um, on that day, uh, the school of uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas was, um, they became a victim of gun violence. It was an incident that shook the country and also inspired a national debate about gun regulation. Marches and rallies all around the country started popping up. Daphne knew that if she wanted to set change, she had to go, and she wasn't alone. So I coordinated um, coach buses to leave from campus to the Syracuse March, and we filled up as many people as we could in those buses, and we took them there. And I, I had never sort of organized anything of this scale before, but I, I wasn't gonna let that stop me because there's people who, are, who aren't here anymore, and they don't have voices, but we can be their voice. And I knew I, had to, I couldn't stop until I got there, I got to the march. And Daphne didn't stop. This was only the beginning. I organized the New York City Sister March of National March on the NRA. Um, so we shut down a plaza in New York City on the Upper East Side and we had a staging and uh, we had speakers come out. So we had um, speakers from organizations like Gays Against Guns, which was created shortly after the Pulse nightclub shooting. Um, and they are amazing, amazing activists um, that are taking up the stance of gun violence prevention from a personal standpoint. Um, at the event, um, something that um, we, we do in a lot of these events is something called a die-in. So basically, um, it's a, a physical protest where you lie on the ground um, and you basically um, sort of become a, a victim of gun violence. You act as if you're one of the dead or one of the injured. And we, we laid there and we um, spoke names of victim of gun violence. And um, something that's really integral to this whole um, community is recognition and remembrance that we we are not fighting for this as a as a selfish cause we're fighting for the people who are here today but for the people who are no longer here as well how has social media helped you accomplish all the amazing things that you have accomplished as a generation 
our stories couldn't get out there if it wasn't for platforms like Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Um, and I mean, that's how I've made so many of my initial connections with activists across the country, sending a DM and say, hey, you're doing this amazing thing in your community, how can I help you? What are some behind the scenes aspects about being an activist that most of the general public doesn't know about? We want to remind people that we are still kids, you know, um, and, and we can go out there and interview our butts off and, and come at you with statistics, but we also like, you know, like to sleep until two o'clock in the afternoon and, um, you know, we're, we're equally as obsessed with Netflix as we were before all this stuff happened to us. And I think people forget that, you know, when they're sending death threats and they're, and they're telling your families that they've raised horrible individuals um, and, and they threaten you physically with their weapons, people don't remember that we're just kids. I always like argue with my mom because, you know, she's concerned about how I'm juggling activism and, you know, schoolwork at the same time. And I tell her, like, you know, it may not be um, a paid bachelor's education that I'm learning, at, you know, being an activist, but I mean, I'm, I'm engaging in, in public speaking, I'm doing logistical organizations, I'm talking with mayors and governors across the country, you know. I am learning at the same time. Do you see yourself being an activist for life now? Yes, I do. You know, I think the great thing about gun violence prevention is that it's opened up the doors for youth across the country to find what it is that they believe in. You know, gun violence prevention is an important issue to me, but I have tons of other issues that I, I find I'm really passionate about. And I've been able to use my skills as an activist to put my passion into other things that I want to see change arise in. You know, the whole issue with uh, the Supreme Court nominee, I've also been incredibly active in that sector as well, leading, helping to organize and lead protests in Washington. Um, and I think um, once, once, you, once you learn the skills of how to organize and how to properly sort of make sure that change gets enacted in something that you believe in, the sky's the limit. Amada Gaba for WTOP 10. Thank you again, Daphne, for letting me interview you. What a great story. And if you're going to the Media Summit today, we're going to have workshops going all day. We're going to have a pre-show here at WTOP at the actual summit at 2 o'clock, and then the actual panel itself will be at 3 o'clock to have all the information. You can go to Media Summit. Dot org. Have a great day. Thanks for waking up with us. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Hi there. You might wonder what a famous Hollywood celebrity like me is doing reading in the dark. Is this some new sort of Hollywood method acting? No. This is quite real. Did you know that Americans use about four times as much energy per year as the global average? We waste energy left and right despite the fact that the dirty fossil fuels we use to power our energy sources wreak havoc on the natural world and destroy valuable wildlife habitat. By reading with my solar-powered night vision goggles, I'm saving energy and look at fleek. <laughs> you don't have to sit in the dark like Ed Bagley Jr. to save the world. Fight climate change by speaking up for cleaner, smarter energy, including rooftop solar. Oh, that's way better. <laughs>